In the previous videos, we saw how we can perform a quality control on the reads and only retain the high quality reads. The next step in the workflow is the identification of the species in the sample. There are several reasons why you want to verify the species in your sample. For instance, samples can be mislabeled. An E. coli sample could be mislabeled as a salmonella sample, or the sample might be contaminated with another species. In these examples, not knowing which species are actually present in the sample could have a large influence on the final results obtained from the analysis. In case of the mislabeling, there might not be any result, and in case of the contamination, the wrong species might be identified as a culprit in a clinical sample. So as another step which could be considered a quality control step, we can execute a tool called Kraken. Kraken is based on KMIRS and is ultra-fast in identifying sequences compared to Megablast. The only trade-off is a slightly lower sensitivity compared to Megablast, but it does have a very high precision. The only challenge you face when you want to use Kraken is the fact that it uses tens of gigabytes of memory when it loads the entire NCBI RefSeq database into memory to identify the sequences. And this is where Galaxy comes to the rescue, as Galaxy is run on a server that can accommodate this kind of tool. You can find Kraken in Galaxy in the group NGS Taxonomic Classification, and here is Kraken tool, or you can always search for it in the search bar on top of the page. So for Kraken, we need to select whether we have single or paired reads. So in this case, we have the paired reads that we used up to now. The forward strand will take the R1 paired reads. So it's uh, the trimmed reads on the Neisseria dataset that we use. And for the reverse strand, we use the R2 paired. We can set a number of options. An important one is here, output Kraken report. By default, it says no but we're going to put this to yes now, and I'll explain later on why this is necessary. And then we can select also a database. So by default, the ABF HPV is selected. So that stands for archaea, bacteria, fungi, human, protozoa, and viral. But you also have arthropods, birds, and mammals. Detailed information about how these databases are created, you can find down here. But we're going to use the default one for now, and we're going to click Execute. So this will run for a while. Once the run has finished, we'll continue. So Kraken has finished running now, and we can have a look at the output. So the first file we'll look at is the default file that is output by Kraken2. So we just click on the eye icon, and this screen will open up. So this is a list of all the reads, and each of them has a separate line in which a classification is shown. It's also five columns. So the first column says C or U, so it's either classified or unclassified. The second column says the sequence ID. The third one is the taxonomy ID it was assigned to. The fourth one, in case of paired and reads like this here, shows the length of a sequence and with a pipe in between to show the sequence length for the first read and the sequence length for the second read. And the fifth column shows you the mappings of the taxonomy. So in this case, if you look at the first line, it was seven k-mirs assigned to taxon 482, one k-mir to taxon 2, 14 to taxon 482, and so on and so on. And from this list, Kraken will determine the best classification for this read. But as you can see, this is really hard to interpret. If you would have to go through this list for tens of thousands of reads, and note down each time the taxonomy ID, look up what taxonomy ID means which species, you would lose a lot of time. And that's why we requested, when we started the job, to also have a report. So if we look at the report, we get a nice textualized overview of what was in the sample. This overview is in the form of a TSV file, so a tab separated value file, and it has six columns. In the first column, we find the percentage of reads assigned to that taxon, and in the second column, the number of reads that were assigned to it. These numbers are cumulative, meaning that they contain reads from all lower ranks starting from that point. If you want to know how many reads were assigned to that taxon directly, you can find that number in the third column. In the fourth column, we find the rank code. There are 10 default ones, and they start with U for unclassified, R for root, K for kingdom, and all the way down to S for species. Sometimes you will see a number behind one of these rank codes. 
This means that the taxonomic rank does not belong to one of the 10 default ones. Instead, it uses the rank code of the closest ancestor and adds a number to indicate the distance from that rank. So S2 means that this is below the species level and that the grandfather of that rank is at the species rank. In the fifth column, we find the taxon ID for that taxon and in the sixth column, we find the scientific name. If we look in our results, we see taxon ID 482 and 487, which we saw a lot in the first lines of the previous output. And these are actually the genus Neisseria and the species Neisseria meningitidis. So we see a total of 198,471 reads assigned to the genus Neisseria, or any lower rank starting from that genus. 189,750 were assigned to the species Neisseria meningitidis, of which 183,336 were assigned directly to that species and the difference was assigned at a lower rank. You can also make a visual representation of these results and you can do that with Krona. So you can find the Krona tool in NGS Taxonomic Classification under the visualization label and there you will see Krona pie chart from Prekin Output. So if we just open it the only thing that you need to do is give it the Kraken output. Always make sure that you use the classification output and not the report, because it will generate an output, but it will be completely wrong. So make sure that you have the classification. Then the only thing that you have to do is execute, and a Krona pie chart will be created. So Krona has finished running now, and you can just open the interactive visualization by clicking on the eye icon on the output data. To show you what you can do with Krona, I have loaded a chart from a different sample. So you see that in this case we had 57% of sequences that could not be identified by Kraken. In the other half we find a number of bacteria, eukaryota and a small number of viruses. You can click on a wedge to select it and when you see arrows appear on the top and the bottom you can zoom in on that level by clicking it again or by clicking on the expand icon in the top right corner here. If you click on it, you will see that the wedge expands. You can go even further. If you click here, you will see the arrows again, and you can expand again on that level until you're at the maximum zoom level. If you want to zoom out again, you can either click on the name of a level in the center, such as Lactobacillus here, and you will zoom out to that level. You can also zoom out further by clicking on one of the pie charts here on the right. So if you want to go back to the root, we just click on the pie chart of the root and we will back where we started. If you know the name of the organism you're interested in, you can also search for it by name. So if for instance, we want to look at Lactobacillus acetotolerance, we just start typing acetoto and you will see that there's one result in here. So we click to expand and we will find Lactobacillus acetotolerance over there. It is also possible to limit the number of levels that are shown, to increase the font size, the chart size, but you can also create a snapshot to save this figure and export it to another program. If you want some more information on how to use Corona, please go to their GitHub page where you can find a wiki and a manual that will explain it all. So this concludes this video on the identification of the species present in a sample, and in the next videos we will start with mapping and assembly of the reads.